Edmonton's light rail transit system. And at the southernmost end of the line, Century Park. Century Park? That's a pretty epic name. I mean, it's not annual park or decade park, but Century Park. And it's pretty much a big parking lot. I guess that's what the park stands for. But this area didn't always look like this. The original development was a lot more interesting more interesting than a parking lot. I'm not making this up. My name is John Webster, I'm an architect. I was born in Edmonton, raised in Edmonton, went to McGill in Montreal, took my architectural education there, and came back to Edmonton, and then moved to work with Jim Wensley, and have been with the same firm ever since. John Webster was the project architect for a highly regarded retail center in British Columbia, Coquitlam Center. While working with Jim, I was involved with a shopping center in Coquitlam, British Columbia, that won a Governor General's Medal, which is quite unique for shopping centers. And the client that we had in Coquitlam came to Edmonton and bought a property called Cascateo Center and renamed it Heritage Mall. In the coming years, the city's retail landscape was about to be transformed in a very major way. But it wasn't only Edmonton's retail scene which was changing. Day on developments at that time was a rising star in the development industry. They were doing three shopping centers at the same time in Alberta, one in Edmonton, one in Red Deer, one in Calgary. They were all done by different architects. Uh, the materiality and the background was somewhat similar through them all, but not, not totally. The Day on Development Corporation had secured funding for what, at that time, was the largest ever single retail expansion project in Western Canada. To Calgary, it brought Sunridge Mall. To Red Deer, Bower Place. And, to Alberta's capital city, it brought the largest of the three shopping centers, Edmonton's Heritage Mall. Distinguished. Extravagant. Tranquil. Four-star shopping is finally here at Heritage Mall. Heritage Mall in itself was a $60 million project. In 2019, that number translates to the equivalent of over $200 million. The, the shopping center uh, concept and the materiality of it uh, was really built on the success that we had done in Coquitlam with the Coquitlam Center. Heritage was the the second cousin of Coquitlam. It was cut back somewhat, it was a little smaller. Coquitlam had extensive, huge skylights. Heritage had isolated skylights. The use of brick, earth tone colors, the, the hemlock ceilings, all was very appropriate in the late 70s and early 80s. Both advertisements and newspaper articles about the mall boasted the aesthetic beauty that was to come along with it. When we were designing Heritage, the, the intent was to try and create a, an atmosphere in the mall that reminded you not of winter in Alberta, but of warmer places and, and the like. We imported trees from, uh, from Florida. Some of those were, were quite large. Everything was designed around the idea of making Heritage a serene, relaxing environment. From the 30-foot tall, 6,000-pound palm trees to the over 20,000 square feet of glass used in its skylights. Plus, one unique feature which had not been seen in any Edmonton Mall before or since Heritage. 
when we were designing the center court, we were looking to try and find a feature and jokingly someone in our office said, why don't we build a waterfall? And it caught. The day before it opened was the first time that we actually got to turn on the waterfall and turned on the waterfall and the water went horizontally uh, because of the air movement and the, the transition from the water sitting in a pool at the top and dropping over the edge. So we very quickly figured out how to correct it and for opening day it was working and it, it was really quite uh, unique. The waterfall was touted as Edmonton's largest continuously running waterfall or Edmonton's second largest waterfall overall, second only to the now inactive Great Divide waterfall, which used to drop from the high-level bridge. Coquitlam was built on the side of a BC coastal mountain, and so it had a grade level differential between the first level and the second level of the shopping center. That grade level was created at Heritage. The site was actually built up 16 feet in the southwest corner to give access to the upper level of the shopping center. The lower level of the shopping center was served from the easterly side of the site and then we built a one level parking structure in the northeast corner that gave access to both levels of the shopping center. The shopping center opened fully leased, as I recall. It had Eaton, Sears, and Woolco. The plans of the Sears and Eaton stores were basically flipped versions of what was done in West Edmonton Mall at the same time. August 5th, 1981, opening day. An estimated 120,000 people visit Heritage Mall. Police asked local radio stations to announce major traffic delays in the area, as cars, all filled with people who were dying to see Edmonton's newest mall, were waiting bumper to bumper in a line which spanned 28 blocks. To say that opening day at the 47-acre site was a spectacle would be an understatement. Hot air balloons filled the air, clowns and entertainers thrilled the crowds, and it was standing room only in the center court where those first lucky people to enter the mall waited to hear if they had won one of the thousands of dollars worth of prizes which were being given away. With three department stores anchoring 158 retail outlets, including the largest Safeway in Northern Alberta, Heritage Mall was a hit. They even filmed an episode of SCTV right at Heritage Mall. Some other god awful thing. Why don't you get a job like everybody else? You can see the waterfall in the background of this shot. With its size of 777,000 square feet, a mere 1,000 square feet more than Londonderry Mall at the time, Heritage was Edmonton's largest mall, a title it held onto for exactly six weeks. It was 42 days later when West Edmonton Mall opened its doors for the very first time, its own first step on its path to becoming the world's largest mall, a title which West Edmonton Mall held for decades. It still exists today as North America's largest mall. For the decade following its initial opening, Heritage Mall remained a success, despite almost immediate financial troubles from the mall's owner, Dayon Corporation. The initial owner of Heritage, Dayon, went bankrupt, um, and uh, Cambridge Shopping Centers took over the shopping center, competing against Southgate, which is two miles north of Heritage and Southgate had Woodward's as its major anchor with the bay and then Woodward's went bankrupt and Woodward's was a partial owner of Southgate and Cambridge bought the Woodward's properties and became the owner of both shopping centers. The two large and reasonably successful shopping malls being so close together was already somewhat of an oddity in itself but now both malls were owned by the same company. So instead of pitting the two malls against each other, the strategy was to use the company's assets to make the most financially sound decisions possible. And for a time, it was smooth sailing for the twin malls. As the 
initial terms of leases expired. Its occupancy rate wasn't as strong because the economy in Alberta had dropped off dramatically from the day it opened. And then the majors started to disappear. Further north at Southgate, Woodward's closed and the owner of Heritage moved Eaton's from Heritage to Southgate. Volco became Walmart. Walmart doesn't like shopping centers. With the anchor space formerly occupied by Eaton's still vacant after several years, Heritage Mall was dealt its fatal blow. In 1998, four short years after taking over the Woolco location at Heritage, Walmart announced it too was leaving the shopping center. By this time, Sears, the mall's last remaining anchor, was operating as an outlet store. At one point, um, to save the their Safeway tenancy, they moved them out of the mall and built the freestanding Safeway store in the corner of the site. We then looked at incorporating a multiplex cinema, and that went quite a way. It came very close to being done, and then the deal died. Just one year after Walmart left Heritage, Eaton's, after 130 years of operation, declared bankruptcy. Its assets were purchased by Sears, including the rights to the former location in the healthy and popular Southgate Mall. Sears left Heritage in the year 2000. The mall was empty. A few stores did remain, but without anchor tenants, it was a helpless battle. Uh, we were trying to look at alternative ways of redeveloping the site, and then Cambridge decided that they would try and sell the property. Less than a year after the departure of Sears from Heritage Mall, Cambridge terminated the leases of the 28 stores remaining in the mall and put the property up for sale. We started it and, almost, well, I guess we, we ended it as well. The last project that we did for them before they sold the site was the spa lady that got built on the other side of the parking lot from the Safeway store. That and the Royal Bank were part of the beginnings of a, a development that they were hoping would be able to compete with this upstart shopping center that was being built to the east. That upstart shopping center is South Edmonton Common. An interesting aspect is that Cameron Developments and Jerry Nackvi who developed South Edmonton Common, Jerry was actually our initial client on Heritage Mall. One might say it's almost poetic in its circumstance. The very same people behind the original concept of Heritage Mall were the ones who delivered its knockout blow. Heritage, Heritage was built uh, at a time in Alberta that interest rates were getting to the highest that they had ever been. And the the process of, of developing the shopping center was one that if you could build it, it didn't make as much difference as to how much it cost because inflation was compensating for the costs that you might have had. Heritage Mall may have survived the recession which hit Alberta hard, virtually the exact same time that the mall opened. It was a unique set of circumstances that led to its demise. A change in its ownership Paired with the fact that in its lifespan of less than two decades, there were major changes in retail. Woodward's, Woolco, and Eaton's all ceased to exist as they once did when the mall first opened. But in an alternate timeline, could anything have been done differently to save Heritage Mall? I think the circumstance of Cambridge owning the two of them and that they were as close as they were meant that one of them was going to get preference over the other. I think if, if in the end, uh, Dayon had been uh, acquired by someone other than Ivanhoe Cambridge, or that Woodward's properties had been acquired by somebody other than Ivanhoe Cambridge, it could have been different. Uh, generally, it, it would have put a 
more of a competition on how to make the center better. It didn't get the same support that Southgate did, and because Southgate was doing better, and so you support your better shopping centers. Of course, we'll never know for certain. And today, with the right set of eyes, you can still see the history of what was once Edmonton's most beautiful mall. In Southgate Center, in South Edmonton Common, and even in Phase 1 of West Edmonton Mall. So, the next time you're crossing that great parking lot that is Century Park, think back to the area's original development. Remember the palm trees, remember the hemlock wood ceilings. Remember the brick and the earth tones, and Edmonton's largest continuously running waterfall. Remember the history of Heritage Mall. Special thanks to John Webster for sharing his time and memories to make this video possible. And if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our channel, give us a like and a share, and maybe even visit our Patreon page. And why not check out one of our other videos, mostly about the greatest indoor show on Earth, West Edmonton Mall. Oh, and thanks for watching. <laughs>